playing NES, and even when the Super Nintendo came out, I was playing my Sega Genesis. I loved Sonic and Tails, spending countless hours watching the cartoon, playing Sonic 2, and reading the comics. I even at one point had Sega Channel, which made me about the coolest kid on the block at the time. I would even go as far to say that I prefer the Sega Genesis over the Super Nintendo, and one such game that makes me feel that way is Dynamite Heady. Dynamite Heady is an action platformer that came out in 1994, a year before the Genesis was officially discontinued. It was made by Treasure, the company behind Gunstar Heroes. So this should give you an idea of what kind of promise this game has. The game looks stunning and has great music and overall sound. Dynamite Heady is probably one of the best examples of what the Genesis was really capable of. Sega had this game ported to the Master System and Game Gear as well. A 32X port was planned but never happened as by that time the 32X was already considered a general failure. Dynamite Heady had really great reviews, but it's still glossed over and forgotten about a lot of the time when people think of the Genesis. This probably has to do with its late release on the system. In the game, you are Heady, a puppet who decides to fight back when the puppet world of Northtown is being attacked by the evil puppet king, Dark Demon. I know it's not a very original name, but that doesn't really matter. This story and game plays out and acts like many Genesis games. I don't know why Genesis games loved using acts to tell their stories, but Treasure takes it a step further here. Since Hetty is a puppet, Treasure made the playing field look like a giant stage with backdrops, overhead stage lights, curtains, and scaffolding, and the mini boss and regular boss battles usually play out on a stage with themes like it's part of a show. You'll even see Hetty take a bow to applause when you clear an act. Yes! This is one of my favorite aspects of the game. It just really creates an interesting story and universe to interact with. It is very original, and with this idea that everything is happening on a stage, brings in some fourth wall aspects of the gameplay, with the clapping after you clear an act, and Hetty giving you funny looks as the story moves on. It allows the game and story to be interesting while not taking itself too seriously, yet you are still drawn into the game. Dynamite Hetty has some interesting gameplay mechanics as well. As the name of the game and character suggests, it involves using Hetty's puppet head to interact with your environment and fight. Mostly a platformer, but a very fast-paced one with some non-platforming sections and a minigame to spice things up. Hetty's main attack is to launch his head out at enemies. Hetty could do this in all eight directions, allowing for smoother gameplay, and it's a needed mechanic for some of the more fast-paced levels. He also had power-ups for his head, which are found on occasion, available in a little box marched around by a little helper. There would be three powers to choose from at this point, and you could pick one, decide if you like it, and then pick another one if needed. The power-ups would allow Hetty to become really small, make his head metal, spiky, shoot sparks, make his nose a vacuum, and a couple others. This power-up system is also how you unlock the minigames. On occasion, the power-up blocks would have the needed power to unlock the minigames, so you could essentially choose to play it or not. If you did, Hetty would, oddly enough, become the Statue of Liberty, and you would begin the game. The minigame has Hetty using his head to shoot some baskets. Nothing too amazing, but it is a good distraction. Also on occasion, the power-ups will scroll through three special ones which give Hetty flying powers. You can pick between a plane, a rocket, and some bird type thing. Each has their own benefits and disadvantages. The bird thing fires slower, but also fires down in an arc, while the plane fires faster with bullets in a straight line, and you can turn around. And the rocket fires long lasers very quickly, but you can't turn around. The jet handles more like your usual side-scrolling shoot 'em up It is a very lively game, and you should expect to have fun as you go through different levels and meet the different characters, enemies, and bosses but do expect to get frustrated, as this is no cakewalk. It is a treasure game, so it's almost to be expected. There are a number of reoccurring characters and friends of Hetty that you will meet in this game. First you have Hetty's friends, who help in just about every level. First is Headcase, who carries a little box around with the power-ups, and you also have Hangman, which aids Hetty with platforming. Hetty can launch his head up and grab on the Hangman, and launch himself in several directions, or just move up and down on platforms. Lastly, there is Bo, who was Navi before we had Navi. Bo shows up in boss battles and shows you where the weak spots are on a boss. 
There is also a girl puppet with floating hands called Heather that collects the keys when you defeat a boss. I'll let you discover her story by playing the game. There is also a reoccurring mini-boss called Trouble Bruin. He is a cat-like thing that is mostly just the goofy annoyings in the earlier levels, but can be a pain later on. His weak spot is always the same, strike his head. Your bosses, or key masters in the game, also have very distinct personalities and are where this game's difficulty really shines. You'll have giant bouncing dogs that go by the name Mad Dog, all the way to probably the weirdest key master, Babyface. The Babyface battle is a flying stage and a tough one. As you shoot Babyface, you destroy layers and Babyface becomes an adult man and then an old man, with its attacks changing each time. It is a hard battle and a weird one. One of my favorites is Spinderella, who extends long arms and spins the game field, causing you to be drawing at a distance, creating a faux 3D environment. I just always thought it was a really cool effect. Dynamite Heady is a cool game with a lot of personality. It presents a challenge, but still entertaining. It's not just frustrating. It is definitely one of the gems of the Sega Genesis and the 16-bit era. I definitely suggest trying to track this cart down but you can also download it on Virtual Council for about the same price as you may find it in the wild. I'll see you next time!